Good morning, fellows. Uh, at least uh, it's morning here. Uh, in the last video, uh, we were checking out how to assemble the new camera train on my telescope, getting everything right with um, uh, spacing, and uh, yeah, basically just checking that everything is in focus. Uh, as you can see now in front of me is the whole scope. The focuser and the camera is pointing down towards the floor. Today I am going to do a balance of this rig. As I mentioned earlier, um, it's quite important to get the balance right uh, when you are using a direct driven mount. It doesn't have to be a awesome mount, uh, it can be any direct driven mount. There aren't any gears or pulleys or belts in direct ribbon mounts. It's just as it says in the name, the axis and the, the motor in the mount is the axis. And there is why they are so precise. It's really important to get the balance right because if you have a power failure and the scope is out of balance, um, the scope will start moving basically. But there is a second thing uh, that is more important and that is the precision of the mount. To get good tracking um, the motors need to work as effortless as possible and when you are um, having the right sweet spot in the balance where it basically weighs nothing, well it has mass. Um, don't get me wrong here, the telescope has mass but when you get that balance just right so you can move it freely in uh, every direction in uh, both right ascension and declination axis and the telescope just stays there. Um, so how do we achieve this? To help me I am going to use one of these, a ruler of aluminium which has uh, three edges. I'm just going to lay that down on the table and put it underneath the saddle plate and we will find the sweet spot. And because the edge of the ruler is so straight, I believe that um, this is going to be ridiculously precise. Since I had a refractor, I have been moving the saddle plate in the mount, which could be a bit tedious and not that precise. When you try to move it, uh, you move it either uh, too little or too much. So I have went out and bought <laughs> these out of AliExpress and I am going to, instead of moving the whole tube, um, I am going to mount um, these adjustment weights or um, as you can call it off-axis balancing. So I am going to use these weights um, to balance the whole rig. Uh, I can attach it to the Vixen, Vixen rail on top of the telescope. I can move, of course, the counterweight down the shaft, counterweight shaft, and I can also move it off axis on the saddle plate. So this will be, I believe, uh, a quite big change for me. First thing I am going to uh, check out is um, basically the the linear balance uh, along the axis. First thing I want to assess is that we actually got the saddle plate roughly in the middle, so it uh, doesn't uh, uh, is like 10 centimeters wrong or anything. Um, so um, I am going to put this underneath here. And we take a look at how the balance is. So about straight there and just let go. So a bit back heavy there. Okay, so we now know that I need to move the tube rings about one centimeter uh, further to the back. 
Okay, so I have attached some piece of tape here so that we know uh, how much we are going to move the tube rings. And uh, I'm just releasing these two bolts here. Is enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect on the first try. So before I clamp this down, I am going to double check that the um, camera is pointing in 90 degrees straight down. Okay, so we got the length right. Uh, we got the um, rotation of the tube right. I'm just going to clean this tube then I am going to attach the upper part of the rings. So what I have done now, uh, I have put the ruler underneath the saddle plate and I also marked uh, the center of the saddle plate on a piece of tape. On my side you can't see it in the camera. This is the counterweight here. Um, so I have already double checked this, you know, it's a cooking show where everything is ready. If I hold the tube horizontally, I'll let go. It's still just a bit back heavy. It's just a slight off balance here, which we can assess with the counterweight. Oh, it's front heavy. Back heavy, you see. There's not much I need to adjust now. It actually stays there. But we have one more balance act to do. Um, <laughs> and you see I can swivel this one. And that is exactly what I am going to do now. We are now going to balance the scope in this direction, right? But this was too big um, to use. Uh, it will just fall apart, <laughs> like um, roll too much on each side. What I did was that I took uh, one of these um, um, pieces of wood you have uh, when you're having a barbecue. And I tape that straight down the middle of the saddle plate. So we are now going to do basically the same, but in another direction. I'm just moving millimeters right now, so. Yeah. I'm happy with this. Um, tighten everything down so it doesn't move. This is it for this video. This video will probably qualify as the most boring video I have ever done. You guys watching me balancing my telescope in a slow and tedious process. But um, this is how I do it. Don't know if this is necessary to do it on this fine level. Um, my mount has been working flawlessly with less balanced telescope than this. So, but hey, at least I showed you uh, my process on how to properly balance your scope if you are <laughs> going with a drive driven mount. If you like my videos, please subscribe, like this video, share it among friends, whatever. If you have any questions, just ask them. This is it for this video, as I said. Um, clear skies, my name is Daniel, you're watching Exo Photography.